Hello everyone. For our final Physics 151 video, we will be taking a look at buoyancy and the buoyant force. The buoyant force is the upward force that a fluid exerts on any submerged or partially submerged object in an attempt to lift that object up out of itself. Archimedes' principle states that this force ends up being equal to the weight of the fluid that got displaced by the submerged object. Since the weight of the fluid can be expressed as the mass of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity, and since the mass of the liquid or fluid can be expressed in terms of density times volume, the equation we end up using for the buoyant force is that it is equal to the density of the fluid or liquid multiplied by the volume of the liquid or fluid that has been displaced by the object times g the acceleration due to gravity. The main key to properly doing buoyant force questions is accurately finding the volume of that displaced liquid. As an object is submerged in the liquid, it is moving the liquid out of the way. The volume of the liquid that ends up moving or getting displaced ends up being the exact same as the amount of the volume of the object that has been submerged. Let's take a look at some examples to see how the buoyant force works. Here we have a 6 kilogram bowling ball with a radius of 11 centimeters hanging from a rope and is fully submerged in water. If the ball floats in water without touching any of the sides of the container, find the tension in the rope. Reading through this problem, we can see that we are looking for tension, which is a force. We are also told that as this bowling ball is hanging, it is floating in the water. Or in other words, it's just staying still. So thinking about forces and the object not moving, this doesn't seem too different from some of our older free body diagram problems. The only difference now is that since the ball is submerged in water, we will have this new buoyant force to keep track of as well. So let's draw our diagram like we've been doing for a bulk of this course. I'll let this be our tank filled with water. There's going to be a bowling ball just floating here without touching any of the sides which is also hanging from a rope. Now what forces are acting on this bowling ball? Since there is a rope holding it up, we know there's going to be some amount of tension directed along the direction of that rope. As usual, we are presumably on Earth, so there will be the weight of this bowling ball, or the force of gravity, which is m times g. We might want to be a little bit careful here labeling this mass as the mass of the bowling ball, so mb. And up until this point, these might be the only forces we would draw for a hanging object. But now that we understand buoyancy, we know there is going to be the buoyant force, Fb, which is always directed up out of the liquid. With all my forces drawn, now I can start to think about applying Newton's second law, which states the sum of the forces, they're all in the y direction, should be equal to the mass of my object, which is the bowling ball times the acceleration of my object, which we are in the y direction here. Adding up all my forces, both the tension and the buoyant force are going upwards, so I'll choose that direction as positive, so tension plus the buoyant force. Then the weight of the object is going downwards, so that gets a minus mass of the ball times g equals the mass of the ball times acceleration, but as we mentioned, this object is not moving, it's just floating there, staying still, so the right side will just become zero. Looking at this equation here, we know we're trying to find tension, so we need to be able to plug in numbers for everything else. We know the mass of the bowling ball. Mass of the bowling ball is given to us as six kilograms. G we know is always 9.8, but we currently don't have the buoyant force. This is where we will use our new equation that the buoyant force equals the density of our liquid or fluid times the volume displaced of that liquid or fluid times g. We know the fluid is water, so we have the density of the liquid is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, but we don't yet have the volume of the displaced fluid. To get that, we have to ask ourselves how much of the object's volume is submerged, and that must be equal to how much volume of the liquid has been displaced. In this case, since the entire volume of the ball has been submerged, that means the volume of the displaced liquid must be the entire volume of the bowling ball. Since the bowling ball is a sphere, to get that volume, we will use the volume of a sphere equation, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. 
In this case, we're finding the volume of the bowling ball, so we use the radius of the bowling ball, which, reading our question, seems to be 11 centimeters, which we would want to convert to 0.11 meters. So our buoyant force can now be written as the density of the liquid, which we know, then trade out the volume of displaced water for the volume of the entire bowling ball, since it's entirely submerged, times gravity. Now we're ready to plug in our expression for the buoyant force into our net force equation. Doing so gives us tension plus the buoyant force becomes the density of the liquid, which is water, times the volume of the entire bowling ball, which is 4 thirds pi times the radius of the bowling ball cubed times g. Then minus the mass of the bowling ball times g must be equal to zero. Moving things around to solve for tension, we get Tension equals mass of the bowling ball times gravity minus the density of the liquid times 4 thirds pi radius of the bowling ball cubed times g. Plugging everything in, we know the mass of the bowling ball is 6 kilograms. g is 9.8 meters per second squared minus density of water in this case is 1,000 multiplied by 4 thirds times pi times the radius, which is 0.11 cubed, times 9.8. Going through and doing this calculation, we end up finding a tension of approximately 4.16 newtons. For one more example, we have an object floating on the surface of water with 30% of its volume submerged. What is the density of the object? Similar to the last problem, the object is floating, so it is staying stationary. So whatever forces are present must be balancing each other out. However, this time, the only piece of information we are given is the percentage of the volume that has gotten submerged, as well as the fact that it's floating in water. We can still draw our free body diagram and set up our net force equations, so let's try starting there. Here is the surface of our water, and there's some object, it doesn't tell us what it's shaped as, but let's just draw a ball again. It's floating on the surface of the water, but only 30% of it is actually submerged. Once again, we're going to be assuming we're on Earth, so there's going to be the weight of this object, which will be given by the mass of the object times gravity. This time I'm noting all the quantities of my object with an O as the subscript. And once again, the water will want to try to push us up out of it, so we will have a buoyant force going upwards. These will be our only two forces, so we could then go and make our net force equation in the y direction. We have sum of Fy equals mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Calling the up direction as positive again, we see that the buoyant force minus the mass of the object times gravity must equal, again, our acceleration for the stationary object should be zero, so equals zero. Once again, we can use the fact that the buoyant force will be given by the density of the liquid times the volume of the liquid that has been displaced by the object times gravity. At this point, we might want to consider what we do know and what we are looking for and what other unknowns are left. We are not given the mass of the object. We can assume that because this is water, we have the density of the liquid. At the moment, we don't have the volume of the displaced liquid. To get that, remember that the volume of displaced liquid will always be whatever the volume of the object that has been submerged, whatever that is. We aren't given an actual value for the volume that is submerged, but we are told that this volume of the object that has been submerged is 30% of its entire volume. So we could write this as an equation. 30% is the same as multiplying by 0.3 times the entire volume of the object. So if that's how we could write the volume submerged, that must also be equal to the volume of the liquid that has been displaced by the object. So that will be equal to 0.3 times the volume of the entire object. But we still actually don't know what that volume is. In addition, have we involved what we are actually looking for yet? The question wanted the density of the object. So we are looking for rho of the object. What does that equal? How can we involve that? Well, using our density equation, we know that whatever the density of the object is, it is related to the mass of the object and its volume through mass divided by volume. 
At this point, let's return to our net force equation and see what all we can plug in so far. We know the density of the water, or the liquid, is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The volume of the liquid can be written a few different ways, but I'm probably going to want to involve this 0.3 as the 30% times the original volume, times gravity, which is 9.8, then minus the mass of the object, which I don't know, times the gravity, 9.8, equals 0. So in this equation, it still looks like there's two things I don't know, and neither of those are what I'm actually looking for. But using my density formula, I can relate them to what I am looking for. For a question with so many unknowns that we have no way to figure out, you should expect something to be able to cancel out somewhere. In this particular example, if I use my density equation to solve for the mass, which will equal the density times volume, and make that replacement in my net force equation, I'll end up getting more or less the same thing, but let me replace the mass. Mass becomes density times the volume of the object. And now the density is part of the equation, so I want to solve for that. So if I start moving things around to get the density on one side of my equation, on the left I have the 1000 from the density of the liquid times the 0.3 volume of the object times 9.8 now must be equal to the density that I'm looking for times the volume of the object, which I don't know, times 9.8. To solve for density, next I would need to divide things to get the density by itself. What am I dividing by? Both the volume of the object and 9.8 to cancel them out over on this right side. If I do that on the left, let's see what happens. We notice the 9.8s can cancel out, but also that unknown volume of the object. In the end, we end up finding that the density of the object, since 30% of its mass gets submerged in order to float, ends up being exactly 30% of the density of the fluid, which is water in this case, so times 1,000. Doing this calculation ends up giving us a density of 300 kilograms per meter cubed. And with that, our video series from Physics 151 has come to a close. I hope this has helped.